Hi everybody, my name is Dan Paulin. I am with uh, Etch It Niagara and From the Thicket and we're pretty excited to introduce our Langstroth Beehive. Now you don't actually just make a beehive. It takes a little bit of knowledge. And my staff here at From the Thicket actually studied the Bible of beekeeping from Langstroth himself, which was published in 1866, which is where we got the designs and the prints in order to make this beehive. Let me tell you what makes this beehive, the Langstroth beehive, so unique compared to other hives. The exterior of this beehive is made out of cedar. Even in 1866, they knew the longevity behind cedar and using it on the exterior of this hive meant it would last a long, long time. You're gonna notice some unique features about this beehive. For starters, the angle on the roof angles away from the front of the hive so that during rain or snow or any condensation that might occur will go to the back of the hive. It's equally angled forward, which you can notice, for two reasons. One, when the bees need to push some debris or something they might have inside of the hive out, it's much easier and less strain on the bee. And two, if any condensation occurs on the inside of the hive, it easily leaks out. Condensation inside the hive is not very good for the bees. Oh, there are so many exciting features about this hive. I just can't wait to go over them with you. Starting right here at the venting here on the top, even in the 1860s, Langstroth understood that the humidity and temperature inside the hive was so important to the bees' well keeping. So he added these vents here on the top, as we've done now, in order to allow that humidity or that temperature to be controlled easily by the beekeeper from outside. There's also a great vent in the bottom, but we're going to get into that a little bit later. Now we've put these hinges on here and I'm going to explain why later. We tried to find something old and traditional looking. Certainly this isn't exactly what they would have looked like back then, but they were as close to old fashioned hinges as we could find in our modern day time. Also down here, I'd like to talk to you about something very interesting. This was the alighting strip. Uh, they didn't have landing strips back then in the 1860s. So that was the term he used for the spot that the bees would land before they entered the hive. This beehive is equipped with built-in legs that keep it up off the ground for two reasons, really. One, by keeping it up off the ground, it keeps the vermin from getting in there easily. And the other reason is for rain or snow or anything that might accumulate on the ground, kind of keeps it up off there so the bees are safe. I know what you're saying. There's some handles sticking out of the bottom of this hive. I'd like to explain. These are pretty unique, three handles. The interior handle is the handle of the vent on the bottom. These two are locks. If you just simply open them, this drops right down and I can't wait to show you what's inside. Something in the 1800s that he probably didn't have were these specific lockable clasps. Now, I'm sure he locked them or closed them in some fashion, but we put locks on these both for the safety of the bees and for what we're going to show you next. Well, I'm really excited to show you what's inside this Langstroth beehive. As you can see, this outside, which is made of cedar, isn't really the hive. What's inside, which is glass, is the hive itself. As you can see, there's a number of vents here on the top of the inside hive. Now the vents actually allow the heat to disperse as the bees are inside, and when they're inside, look at this. Look at all these frames. Now, the frames themselves, obviously here in our workshop at From the Thicket, can't have bees inside, but what we did was we put some etched frames from Etch It Niagara to give you an example of what you can imagine when your hive is filled with honey. 
There's 10 frames inside this Langstroth beehive, and what's really amazing is in the 1800s, he knew that double pane glass would act as an insulator. It was a learning experience for me to understand that the heat coming from outside would hit the glass and the temperature on the inside would be different than the outside because of this thermal pane. It's very similar to what you have in the windows of your house today. What's great about this is with the cold or warm air coming in, the temperature changes inside the hive. And because it's glass, the condensation forms on the inside of the glass and it actually travels down to this angled bottom that we talked about in the beginning. Now, when the condensation forms on the inside, it's important that it forms on the glass and not on the honeycomb on the inside. There's a lot of damage that comes to the bees and the honeycomb because of frost. And Langstroth knew that using this double pane glass system, the condensation would form on the glass instead of the hive. Now these top 10 frames aren't actually the beehive. They're the storage. This simply lifts out. I'll set this aside. And inside is the main hive that holds the queen. The brood box inside of here, you'll see there is a number of vents here on the top. These vents can be removed. And the reason these vents can be removed is when the queen has filled her chambers inside here and they're ready for the storage on top to be filled with bees, you're able to remove these, allowing them to go from the bottom to the top. Let's take a look at the queen's box or the brood's box on the bottom. First, we're gonna close this top up and then we're gonna open the bottom. This is where the queen would be. Come and take a look. Well, if this was filled with bees, I wouldn't be handling it this way, certainly not myself. But what I am going to do is, I'm gonna pull out all of these, and I'm gonna show you what's inside. Now that we have the frames removed, Come on back in here and take a look at the inside. You see at the bottom, underneath the frames, are some venting. And we talked about that earlier when I was showing it to you, but I'm gonna lift this up and show it to you from the bottom exactly how it works. As we all know, there's nothing more important than the bees. So from our family-run business here at Etchet Niagara and from the thicket, thank you for viewing a true version of the L.L. Langstroth Beehive.